Scikit-learn tip number 45. Want to include feature interactions in your model? Use polynomial features. P.S. This is impractical if you have lots of features and unnecessary if you're using a tree-based model. Before we go through how you do this, let's first talk about why you might do this. So when you believe that there's an interaction between two or more features, one common technique is to create interaction terms, aka feature interactions, that your model can learn from. So this is generally done by multiplying the values of each pair of features and using those as new features. So this is useful when the combined impact of a pair of features is different from their individual impacts. So for example, let's pretend that you have features A and B and each have a small impact on the target but when they're combined, they have a much larger impact on the target than you would expect. So in that case, it would be useful to create the interaction feature A times B because the model can then learn that that interaction exists. So that's why you might create an interaction feature. In this particular case, we've got three features, A, B, and C, and we'll pretend we've decided to create interaction features between all of them. Our first step in creating them is to import the polynomial features class. We're going to create an instance called poly, and we're going to override some defaults. We'll set include bias equals false to avoid creating a column of ones in the result, and interaction only equals true to avoid creating the square of each feature, which is the default. So when we run fit transform and pass it those three columns, it outputs six columns. The first three columns are A, B, and C. The next three columns are our interaction terms, A times B, A times C, and B times C. And if we want to include those feature interactions in our model, we would just include poly as one of the transformers in our column transformer. So the obvious question is how would you choose which feature interactions to create? So the real answer is that you ideally want expert knowledge to guide your decision about interactions and which ones to create. If that's not available, you can explore the data and try to figure out which interactions make sense. And finally, if you have a small number of features, you could just create all possible interactions and then use feature selection to remove the ones that aren't useful. But, you know, of course, with a large number of features, you can imagine that it's simply not practical to create all possible interactions. Couple final points. As I mentioned in this text above, decision tree based models can learn feature interactions on their own through recursive splitting. This means that if you're using a tree based model, as your primary model, then you don't need to create feature interactions. There's no real point to doing this. However, if you're using a linear model as your primary model, you could actually use a tree-based model to discover interactions and then add those interactions to your linear model. Final point, as with any features you add to your model, you should use a model evaluation procedure to confirm that they are improving its performance before deciding whether to keep them in the model.